Why do humans from the dawn of time have an innate desire to worship a being greater than themselves? This question has puzzled philosophers, theologians, and ordinary folk alike for millennia. The desire to worship, to pay homage to a higher power, seems as universal as the human experience itself. From the ancient Greeks with their pantheon of gods, to the Mayans with their sun and moon deities, to the monotheistic religions of today, one thing remains constant, the human propensity to seek something or someone beyond ourselves. Now, picture this, you're sitting in a lecture hall, listening to a professor meticulously dissect the concepts of morality and ethics. He's determined to strip away all spiritual elements to make a clear distinction between societal norms and individual morality. As you listen, a thought strikes you. Yes, take away everything and be left with nothing, just like how you started. At least that was my thought. This thought harks back to the teachings of evolution where life began from nothing. A stark contrast to the belief that a divine entity set everything into motion. Imagine a child separated at birth from their biological parents, raised by others. Despite the love and care provided by their adoptive parents, this child grows up with a void, an unfillable gap. They constantly seek answers, yearning to know where they come from, what their parents look like, why they were abandoned. They're not seeking material benefits or tangible rewards. No, they're searching for something far more profound. A sense of identity, a feeling of belonging, a connection to their roots. This yearning mirrors our relationship with the divine. Some argue that God created us with an inherent desire to worship him. One could contend that this desire stems from our separation from God, a longing to mend a broken bond. Whatever the reason, the desire is there, as real as the air we breathe. And if this desire is indeed innate, what could be the origin of such a profound yearning? Is it a byproduct of our proposed evolutionary past, or is it a divine gift, a spiritual compass guiding us towards the divine? As we delve deeper into this mystery, Let's remember that the journey itself can be as enlightening as the destination. Consider for a moment the narrative of an individual raised by people other than their birth parents. The person in question might have had a wonderful upbringing, filled with love, warmth and care, yet there remains a void, a sense of something missing, akin to a puzzle piece that's forever lost. Imagine the unending questions that haunt their thoughts. Who are my parents? What do they look like? Why weren't they there for me? These questions, unanswered, echo in the caverns of their heart, a constant reminder of their unique circumstance. This longing, this innate desire for connection with one's roots, is a testament to the human need for belonging and understanding. Now, let's draw a parallel here. Picture, if you will, humanity's relationship with God, a divine parent. As a parent nurtures a child to be disciplined and honorable in adulthood, so God instilled in us, through Adam, a desire to worship or honor Honor him. Adam was never a baby. He was created an adult. Should this be perceived as programming? Consider this perspective, or what if this longing is not a programmed response, but rather a yearning to mend a broken parent-child bond? In the grand tapestry of creation, humans enjoyed a harmonious relationship with God. This bond, however, was shattered, leading to our separation from the divine. Similar to the individual yearning for their birth parents, this separation might have left a void within us, a void that we seek to fill by reaching out to the divine, by seeking a connection with God. But what about those who disregard the divine? Well, not all children in their quest for answers seek a relationship with their birth parents. Some might be rebellious, others might harbor anger, while a few might believe they can navigate life independently. This, however, doesn't erase the questions that linger in the back of their minds. And so, like a child separated from their birth parents, humans too might feel an unfulfilled longing for a divine parent. Could this be the reason why we yearn for something greater than ourselves? Why we strive to fill the void within? But then I wonder, do ethics and morality hinge on this void? Or are they independent of it? What if our desire to worship a higher being is not about submission, but about a longing to mend a broken bond? Imagine, if you will, a perfect parent-child relationship, one without fault or fracture. Picture a bond so strong that it transcends time and space, a love so profound that it's woven into the very fabric of existence itself. This was the bond we once shared with God, yet something went awry. This perfect relationship was damaged, the bond severed. We were separated from God, our divine parent. The result? 
a deep void within us, a yearning for that lost connection. Just like a child who has been separated from their birth parents, we, as God's children, feel an innate void, a longing to know our divine parent. We yearn to understand our Creator, to know what He looks like, to discover our spiritual family history. Sometimes we might even feel abandoned, some questioning why we were separated from our divine parent in the first place. Yet, isn't it fascinating how this longing, this yearning, doesn't push us away, but rather pulls us closer. It's as if our souls are magnetically drawn to the source of our creation. The Bible does say that God created us for his glory. But what if it's not about worship in the conventional sense? What if it's more about establishing a connection and subsequently re-establishing that broken bond about healing the void within us? Let's ponder over this for a moment. If we were created with this inherent desire, wouldn't that contradict God's nature of giving us free will? Here's an alternate perspective. Perhaps it's not an automated desire, but rather a natural outcome of our disconnection, a longing to restore the fractured connection, to fill the void. But what about those who choose to ignore this void, to live without acknowledging a higher being? Ah, oh, that's a story for another time, or perhaps another scene. But remember, just because a child ignores the void doesn't mean it doesn't exist. The question remains, what do we do with this void? How do we mend this broken bond? Not all children yearn to reconnect with their absent parents. Some rebel, some are angry, and others believe they can survive on their own. Just as these children resist the pull of their biological roots, some individuals resist the inherent desire to connect with a higher power. They are the rebellious children of the universe. Imagine a child separated from their birth parents at a young age. They've been told stories of their parents' abandonment, of their disregard. This child grows up fueled by a deep-seated resentment. They're angry at their birth parents, at the void they were left with. They rebel, deciding they don't need their birth parents. They're doing just fine on their own, thank you very much. In the same vein, some individuals, for various reasons, choose to rebel against the idea of a higher power. Maybe they've been hurt, maybe they've been led to believe that they don't need a supreme being to dictate their lives, or perhaps they've just decided to carve their own path independent of any divine guidance. But here's an interesting thing to consider. Even the most rebellious child at some point finds themselves wondering about their birth parents. They might catch themselves pondering on questions like, what do they look like? Do I have their eyes? Their smile? What's my family history? They might not want a relationship, but the questions, they always linger. Similarly, even those who deny the existence of a higher power in moments of quiet reflection or in the face of life's great mysteries might find themselves asking questions. Why are we here? What's the purpose of life? Is there something more out there? The human spirit is innately curious, always seeking, always questioning. Even in rebellion, even in denial, we are driven by the same inherent desire to understand, to connect, to fill the void left by our separation from the divine. So we've explored the desire, the void, the broken bond and the rebellion. But what about those who simply choose to ignore the existence of a higher power? What about those who, despite the questions, despite the void, choose to live without acknowledging the divine? Yet, even in their denial, questions linger, don't they? In our quest for answers, we are led back to the age-old debate between morality and ethics. There I was, in the midst of an intellectual discourse where the professor aimed to separate God from the equation. A bold attempt, indeed, to disconnect the divine from our moral compass. The question is, can morality exist without ethics and vice versa? Can they stand alone, independent of a higher power? In the grand scheme of things, morality is seen as the internal compass guiding our actions, where ethics is the external system, the societal rules we abide by. But where does God fit into this? Or does he fit in at all? The professor in her lecture seemed to suggest that he doesn't. Now let's pause and ponder for a moment. If we take away everything, strip down to the bare bones of existence, we're left with well, nothing, a void, a void similar to the one we discussed earlier, the longing for a lost parent-child bond, the void that we humans in our deepest essence yearn to fill. So if we exclude God from our understanding of morality and ethics, are we not leaving ourselves in that very same void? Are we not depriving ourselves of the chance to mend that broken bond, to quench our innate desire to connect with something greater than ourselves? 
But then again, there are those who choose to ignore the divine altogether. They say they can survive on their own, that they don't need a father figure. They believe they can navigate the tricky waters of right and wrong without divine guidance. Perhaps they can. Or perhaps they're simply rebelling, driven by anger or ignorance. They might even be asking themselves the endless questions whether they want a relationship or not. But isn't it fascinating that despite their denial, the question persists? So, as we stand at the crossroads of morality and ethics, we must ask ourselves, can we truly separate the divine from our understanding of right and wrong?